On the bench today we have a long, kind of a long-term project. Uh, it's, a, it's a Pioneer SX1050. This came from one of the shops. It was purchased by the shop owner a while ago and he, uh, he wanted me to verify some claims that were made when it was brought in and sold to him. And uh, we're going to see some very interesting work that was done in here. Uh, I'm not going to turn it on. I, if, if I power on, the lights come on. There's sound out of both channels. Uh, we are getting popping out of the right channel, and I'm going to kind of pop this open and just show you a couple of things. But this is going to be filmed over the course of several videos. So this is kind of the intake video, right? So let's kind of see what's going on with this and um, kind of do an investigation externally, internally, and I'll kind of show you some uh, some things that kind of make you scratch your head. So anyway again operational state right now it does power on it does produce sound however there's popping out of the right speaker um, cosmetically pretty clean uh, the cabinet is scratched you know for being almost 50 years old it's uh, it's understandable you know there's some veneer that's chipped off at the bottom and the other side is the same and then we come around to the back and the um, AM antenna has just been cut off and clipped, I guess. So, interesting work there. Lots of corrosion, corrosion on the jumpers. Um, doesn't really look like it was maybe clean back here when it was delivered to the shop. Um, so that kind of stuff is interesting. But uh, what's most interesting is what we see on the inside. So let me pop the cover off this real quick and we'll look in, at uh, the inside and see what's going on here. So I pop the top off. Um, protection circuit has not been touched, it appears. The power supply has not been touched, it appears. The FM section has not been touched, it appears. Well, and this is, I think this is power supply board number two. There's one underneath as well. The amp board definitely has been worked on. Um, if you look at that trim pot though, that's an interesting way to address that because these have such short legs. Um, you know, a, a piece of uh, a wire was tacked onto it and and uh, put through the board so I mean that's not a bad way to do it it's just an interesting way to do it what I do think is interesting though is there are I believe there are some replacement capacitors right so this board has been out and you know when the board is out on these and, and you have some replaced uh, driver transistors um, Typically, when I pull a board out on something like this, I will do both sides, right? These trim pots are known to go bad, right? So these are kind of sketchy. Um, the popping is probably from driver transistors on the right channel. And I, I'm pretty sure this is right and this is left. Sorry. This is right and this is left. So, and then all sorts of other on board transistors that are known to be noisy and go bad were not replaced. So I'm just, you know, you just kind of scratch your head like, well, if this board was out, why wouldn't you address all those things? So now if a tech had worked on this, it's up to what the customer wants to pay for. Um, if the tech was refurbishing this though, um, you know, that's that's just kind of a bad practice to in my opinion, to just fix what's broken, sell it to a shop, and call it good. And uh, so anyway, and I don't know how this was presented to the shop or who worked on it. Obviously, someone has worked on it. I just don't know if it was a professional repair or not. I don't think there's a sticker on the back. I don't see any stickers on the back saying anybody worked on it. But uh, it also looks like there were some outputs potentially replaced. You see the smudge of. Sorry, you see a little bit of a smudge of uh, thermal 
paste on that output. And when I shine a light down there, these look original. These look like they were replaced. Um, so, but it, you know, until I get in there, I won't really be able to tell. Um, soft start relay. Soft soft start circuit looks to be original, unmolested. Filter caps are original. So what the shop owner wants me to do is, let me just put my camera back up, is uh, recap this, right? Go through and just redo it. Redo everything, make sure it's good to go so we can sell it or he can use it in the shop. Um, what my plan is right now, my and you know this is always subject to change. Sorry, my camera's a little crooked here. This is always subject to change, but my my strategy moving forward is going to be first address the amp board. Right, I don't want anything failing on this after I've done the protection circuit or the power supply boards or whatever. Normally, I do power supply first. Um, I don't know, I, I, I'm toying around with purchasing a kit to do this. I have most of the capacitors. I will have to buy the filter caps. Um, there's only one uh, company on eBay that I will buy a kit from. It's uh, Peace, Love and Music, I think. And it's an Audio Karma Forum member who who uh, is very, very trustworthy. So, And it just makes it easy. And I say the kit to recap this is three hundred dollars or two hundred dollars you know they're making some money um, I'll end up charging a little bit you know I'll end up gaining a little bit of cash uh, for doing the work but anyway um, I may I may order one of those first or I may just go in and use what I have because I'm pretty sure I have trim pots because I rebuilt my own 1015 I always buy like 10 of whatever I need so I've got trim pots, I have transistors, I even have outputs, I think. I don't have filter caps, though, because these are expensive. But I should have most of these other values. Um, both these uh, relays are working, so they sh shouldn't be an issue. Um, I usually don't touch FM boards, but we'll kind of talk about that as I go through. So anyway, this is part one. This was the intake. This is what we're going to be doing on this. Again, this is going to be shot in several different uh, videos. There's a really good video by X-Ray Tony B. He has a YouTube channel where he gets into the weeds on servicing a couple of 1050s that, you know, if you're thinking about doing this, if you're just going to watch some goofball like me go through and, and repair this or fix, you know, to recap this, whatever you want to call it, great. But if you need more detailed, like why did you do that? Why did you put that there? Why did you change the value of that? You know, X-Ray Tony B's video definitely will answer those questions for you so anyway um, that's where we're at right now stay tuned for part two again my my goal right now is to dive into this amp board but you know this is going to be like maybe a one day a week project so you know it's going to be a while be between uh, video releases and I'll talk about you know some of the pitfalls disassembling this how to do it and uh, and that kind of thing so Anyway, if you like what you see, as always, hit like, hit subscribe. Uh, check out X-Ray Tony B's video for more detailed information on how to really get into one of these and what everything is doing. And um, I'll see you in the next video.